Hello there, sword friends. This is a quick unboxing of what's in that box over there, which the title of this video has likely given away the surprise. Anyway, the main point is I'm going to unbox it, give you some first impressions of what I like, what I don't like, uh, but I suppose you should know this is actually not mine. It's sent to me from a sword friend, Corey, who has opted to purchase it from Cult of Athena and send it to me for the purposes of review to then send off to him. What that means is one, there'll be a follow-up review after, but two, I didn't spend my money on it and it's sent to me for review. And it's also, I suppose, representative of what you would buy new if you were to actually buy one new. So, I'm gonna unbox it. First off, let me look at the blade here. Um, not normally where I start, but you can see it's Hanwei's T10. I think it's their T10 steel. Uh, they do a pretty nice job of making it look look nice for what it is. There's a big old smudge. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. Of Saya Rub. Come on camera, participate with me. There we go. Right in here. I'm not going to touch it because I don't want to oil it, but right about there. Um, it looks almost like a rust spot. It's not. It's just um, a bit of wear from Saya Rub. And that's not all that uncommon. So here's a brand new blade, fresh out of the box. It hasn't been used, but you can just see um, that it's not, you know, it's not rusted, but it doesn't come with a perfect polish. There's little smudges and some very minor scuffing, uh, real small. Um, but other things about the blade, so it's Naginata, and maybe that's apparent if I didn't say the name, I'm sorry, but yes, Hanwei Naginata. And you can see that the flats on the blade are actually surprisingly good. Um, this is one of the cleanest Hanwei blades that I've seen. Inside the bohi, I recognize all the little ripples um, but along the spine, it's actually pretty clean and it's well terminated. I really love the blade profile of this thing though. It's, it's really, really pretty cool. I'm guessing that the Nakago stretches all the way down to about here and that here's where the Makugian or the pin is. Um, and I'm guessing it probably goes down to about here. Not, not sure. I'll get a chance to take it apart in a little bit. Um, Suba is tight. Habaki is tight. It's got some little red lettering in here. Uh, some, you know, pretend Sanskrit kind of stuff. Two different style bohis. You know, pretty neat. Pretty neat overall. Height-wise, I'm about 6'1", and it is marginally taller than me, I think. So, yeah, a little, just a little bit taller. So it's not as big as the Naginata that I practice with, which are usually, you know, uh, another foot, but that might have to do with shipping constraints. In terms of like how it feels, you know, not bad. It's, it's reasonably comfortable. This shaft seems like everything is tight, nothing's rattling around, but I do feel some slight looseness in this little bit right here. I'm not sure exactly what this ring is called on the fittings, but uh, it's, it's not bad. A lot of times on these, I'll see these fittings come unglued. There's just a bit of glue that holds them on. And then they start to rattle, slide around, and kind of mess up this Ishime finish, which right now is, is quite nice. It feels good on my hand. It doesn't seem to show fingerprints. Uh, there's also an elliptical shape to the shaft here. And what I notice is that the, the shape is very easy to index. I know where the edge is. There's also a bit of difference. So this portion where I suspect the Nakago is, has a, a much thicker 
uh, paint on it, more Ishime than this. I don't know if that's for what reason, but the splattering seems just a little thicker here. On the end, there's this, I'm not again sure this wouldn't necessarily be a Kashra, I have no idea what, what this kind of pommel piece or counterweight is, but it lets you smack somebody in the face. It's got a different shape and I don't know if that's to, to hook things or to, to be held. I'm not, I'm not sure why it has this kind of half moon uh, shape on it, which I'm not doing a great job of showing. Overall, I have to say, I like it. I'm looking forward to getting to test one of these two. Now I'm inside, so I'm not going to whirl it around too much, but it, it's got a, a reasonably comfortable, comfortable feel to it. So overall, I, I really like the Naginata, and frankly, you know, there's not, there's not a lot of options when it comes to, to Naginata or pole arms in general, at least. I mean, if you look at for a katana, you have a, just a myriad of options, but when it comes to the Naginata, you're really kind of hard pressed to find, find options. And when you do, they're rarely as robust in size as this. A lot of the, I remember having a Chris Cutlery Naginata that was only a couple inches long, and not that that's unhistoric or anything like that, um, but, you know, something as big and badass looking as this is pretty cool. And I think this is the one Naginata that they make. My concern going into the review is that this shaft feels really lightweight. Uh, and if I'm cutting a tatami mat or using a Naginata the way I've been trained to use a Naginata, uh, I'd imagine there's going to be some impact. And like I experienced with the Hanwei Yari, the shaft didn't hold up really well. So we'll see, we'll see how it does. Um, I'm not intending to do anything abusive to this. I'm going to probably cut some water bottles, pool noodles, and uh, and maybe it's a tommy mat, so nothing crazy. But uh, you got to see what happened when I used the Yari for cutting, and it it snapped, if you don't recall. Anyway, some other bits about this while I have it open. Uh, Hanways usually come with these little indicators that say, hey, you know, it was made at this time. This looks like it was made 2016, September 7th. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, these things just kind of untie and come off. You don't have to cut them. The Saya, or scabbard, is, you know, it's, it's got uh, horn pieces on it. It looks reasonably well made. Very often, these things are cracked. In fact, this is the first Hanwei pole arm that I've, I've held in my hand that doesn't have a cracked Saya. Every Yari I've ever had Every Naginata I've ever had has had a cracked side. So um, this actually is, is not cracked and it actually seems reasonably sturdy. It doesn't rattle around a whole lot. It does, you know, a little bit, but it seems to actually fit on there, um, fit on reasonably well. So that's, that's pretty cool. Packaging wise, it came extremely well packaged. This was completely rolled in paper and then put inside the Hanway box, which was then put inside a larger box with some other paper in it. So, I mean, it, it's a big box and it shipped really well and that has to account for something. I mean, it's pretty expensive to send boxes like that. Uh, other little accoutrement that come with the sword, or not sword, but the pole arm here. We have some examples of how to shim a saya uh, from, from Hanwei, I think. Uh, this is how to file out a saya general blade maintenance by the looks of maybe no this looks like a congratulations some explanation on how they're made and then you have a Hanway cleaning kit that came with it uh, I have my own stuff so I'm not gonna really open this I'll save that for for sword friend Corey uh, the thing to note about cleaning supplies too is they usually come with like a, an Uchiko a little powder ball um, kind of a traditional cleaning kit with the addition of some Hanwei oil. Usually Hanwei puts Hanwei oil, or at least the ones I have, which is kind of a machine smelling oil. But I would prefer it, honestly, to Choji oil. Choji oil smells really nice, and it's it's good stuff. I like it, but it doesn't... I like a good smattering of oil. And now I don't even use the Hanwei sword oil. I have better luck using Break Free CLP, and uh, it's, it's a gun oil uh, lubricant degreaser or something like that, but I find it gives an even coat and does a pretty good job protecting and doesn't have like a very strong odor. Uh, I work in this office. This is my, my man cave as it were. And if I had a bunch of machine oil all over everything, it would kind of smell funky. So, 
Um, I don't have that problem with break free, but I get I get some protection. So I'll apply that before it gets sent off. Initial impressions though, uh, this thing is 500 something dollars. I haven't really looked. I'll do you know some some of this in the review, but my general first impressions are given what's available. I mean, this seems seems like a pretty decent deal. Uh, you're getting effectively a meaty wakazashi, which for $500 doesn't seem like a fantastic deal, especially since it's not folded or laminated. And the fittings are, you know, as you might be able to see here, uh, on the more practical side, very similar to Hanwei practical series stuff. So it's basically a big kind of practical style blade uh, on a stick that isn't worth much. But that in and of itself, if I look at the individual parts, doesn't really make me think it's worth 500 bucks. However, there are not many places that do that, and if you go to try and find a Naginata, um, they're a pain in the ass to find one. This seems, seems like a pretty solid deal, so if I think of supply-demand type stuff or other options available, I'm challenged to think of something that, that you know, seems as, as decent as this for 500 bucks. Um, also, if you have like a Naginata blade, you can attach it to another shaft and get that done, but that's work, and as you probably are all aware, well, I'm not. I'm not certain. I'm not very talented that way. So, um, yeah, I'll I'll have to see how this thing goes. But initial first impressions are this is pretty cool, and I am super looking forward to it. Special thanks again to Sword Friend Corey for sending me this uh, Hanwei Naginata. I'm I'm looking forward to the test um, because I'm doing an unboxing first. It is a good chance to say. What would you like to see as potential viewers of an actual review where I do cutting uh, and show more photos? This is going to be me on a webcam and a talking head with a stick in his hand. But what would you actually like to see? Uh, now again, I'm not going to destroy it. I'm not going to do anything that will intentionally break it. But within the realms of normal usage, uh, what do you think would be helpful to see or know about this particular weapon as I have it uh, for the time being until I send it back. Anyway, let me know. I appreciate it as always, and uh, cheers, and thanks for watching.